We know that when you place similar electric charges next to each other, like two positive charges, they repel. And when we place two opposite charges next to each other, they attract. You might have heard about Coulomb's Law as an explanation for this force, but we're going to go even deeper and talk about two universal concepts that govern these forces, the electric field and the electric potential. The electric field and the electric potential exist all around us and permeate every point of space. You are sitting in an electric field right now, and the electric potential is often called voltage, which is responsible for making the electrons move when you plug your computer into your wall or use a battery. The electric field and the electric potential are closely related to each other. Let's start with the electric field. The electric field emanates from all electric charges. We use an arrow at a point to tell us how strong the electric field is and in what direction it's pointing. The longer the arrow, the stronger the field. Even though we only drew a few, there are arrows like this everywhere in space. It is actually this electric field that causes a force on other charges. If I place a positive charge in an electric field, the charge feels a force in the same direction as the electric field. If I place a negative charge, the force is in the opposite direction of the electric field. The electric field is very useful because it lets us find the forces on charges for very complicated systems. If we can determine the electric field everywhere in space, then the force on a charge is simply related to the length and direction of the arrow at that point in space. In addition to the electric field, charges also have an electric potential or voltage associated with them. The electric potential is related to how much energy is contained in space due to the charge. We represent the electric potential by drawing lines called equipotentials, or points in space that have the same amount of voltage. If I place a charge on an equipotential, then that charge has the same amount of energy everywhere along that line. We can imagine the equipotentials making a 3D surface. The higher the voltage, the higher the surface goes. Notice that when the equipotentials are close together, closer to the charge, the slope of the surface is steeper. Notice that where the electric potential lines are closer together, the electric field is stronger. This is the fundamental relationship between the electric field and the electric potential. This is a very powerful tool for a physicist. If I have a very complicated electric potential, the strength of the electric field at a point is simply related to how closely the equipotential lines are together. The direction of the electric field is such that it points from higher electric potential to lower electric potential. More concretely, a positive charge would move from high voltage to low voltage. In practical terms, when designing electronics, the electric potential is often easier to figure out than the electric field. So, if we can find the electric potential, we can determine the electric field and force on a charge which then allows us to make sure that when you plug your computer into the wall, it doesn't blow up.